Hello and welcome to the first video I'm doing on an experimental design. It's called Completely Randomized Design and this is the most basic. Okay? But there are a few key things that you, you have to understand. Okay, so let, I'm just going to start off kind of with an example and I want to um, develop an experiment to see if Tylenol Tylenol could outdo aspirin. This is the the short name for aspirin. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit. Okay, we do not randomize. Most of the time, we do not take people. Okay, we don't we don't randomly select the people in our group because if if I want to see if if Tylenol helps with a headache, then this person ha has to have a headache. Okay, we need a group subjects subjects with headaches okay and we will recruit n of them okay so now um let's go ahead and i'm not so really we just have these two factors these are my factors okay those are my two factors. I'm not going to put any levels to them. I'm going to make this pretty easy. So if these are my two factors, then I'm only then I only have two treatment groups. Okay. Now I can put a placebo on here, which is called a control, but the control is in a different context. Okay. So here's Tylenol. And this bottom group is aspirin. Okay, so if I have n of them, then I want to randomly assign half to the tr to the Tylenol and half of them to the aspirin. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to compare results. Okay, compare results or compare response. Okay, so now let, let's talk about a few things that I already said that there's one important thing is that you do not have to randomly select people from the outside. The most important thing is that they're randomly placed into each treatment group. That's more important. That's the most important. Okay. Um, we want to replicate, so this N should probably be around 60. So we have 30 in each. Um, we want to control everything other than the aspirin that they're taking. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the SRS for a second. Um, let's say we had 100. So what you would want to do is you want to give the 100 subjects, this is just a review, okay, a number from zero zero to nine nine you want to choose the first twenty five using okay using um, the random function on calculator And we want to omit repeats. Omit repeats. You could have done one to a hundred since I used my calculator. Omit repeats. Choose the first. If I had a hundred, I would choose the first fifty, not the first twenty-five. Okay. These fifty chosen will get. Tylenol while the remaining get aspirin. Okay, that's a good way to explain how to do the SRS. There's many different ways. That's one good way. Okay, 
So now let's talk about a few things that's in, that are important. So what's kind of hard to see is this group right here is a sample. That's a sample with this many people in it and divided by two. Now that sample represents the population. Okay? That represents the population. And that population is everybody that would take Tylenol. Okay? And if you look down here, this is a sample. This is how many people were in your sample here. And these people represent a different population. Okay, these are the population. That, I'm sorry, I'm jumping back up. This, okay, so that's this sample up here represents all the people who would take Tylenol with a headache. This population here would be all the people who would take aspirin. All the people who would take aspirin. Okay, and we're going to measure the decrease in pain scale, let's say. Okay? The average decrease of pain that somebody had from before to after. Now, if, if, now if you look at this, these are two different, two different independent populations. This is going to be a clue when you know to use this, this design right here. Okay. So I just want to let you know because later on you're going to get situations where you'll be dealing with the same population and you would use a, a, a different kind of design. Okay. So I'm going to do one more example on another video. Okay. And try to and try to kind of flip it around a little bit to show you different ways that you could do a completely randomized design. But basically, it's when you have, okay, when you when everybody goes to a treatment group. And, and another thing to note is you don't always need to have the same amount of people in each group, okay? Now, of course, if there's 100 and you have two groups, you do 50. But what happens if you have 100 and you have three groups. You have three groups. You have drug one, drug two, and placebo. So then what you do is you do 33, 33, and 34, any combination. So you don't need the same amount of people in every single treatment group. Okay? So that's it for the first completely randomized design. Make sure you watch the next one. Thanks.